as long as you can read and you choose to read, it should be okay here. Anybody who's messing with pins under an almost 20 year old crusty ass Yukon XL, these are the kind of people, these are the people that make the world go around. You guys. Rotation of the earth is caused by boosted LS motors. All right guys, this is part four of the 4L80 conversion on uh, my 2003 Yukon XL, also known as Uncle Rob. Today is some pretty critical tasks. Well, I guess they're all critical, but some fun stuff. We're gonna be doing the wiring on here, which is the scary part of the conversion for most people. But we got some tips and tricks for that that I guarantee you've never seen before. And also I got a measure for drive shafts to get those on the way. I've already measured for drive shafts, uh, front and rear, but the rear is at full droop. So I have to take another measurement with it pressed up at least close to ride height because it may have measured out to be too long. If you measure the shaft like this and put it on the ground, it can shove the tail shaft, um, it can shove the yoke into the tail shaft, uh, which would not be good. That would ruin everything. So we're gonna have to do that. And uh, I also got the transfer case put in yesterday. That was a total mofo, worst thing ever. Um, I have to put this back. The whole, uh, whole thing here, I didn't film any of it because I just wanted to get it done. Didn't really think it was that critical. But man, it sucked because there wasn't that much room in here. The 4L80 is longer than the old transmission. I had to pull these bolts out and drop this torsion bar across member here just to get enough room to get the transfer case in because this was hitting it like to get it lined up. And we also had to take a C-clamp and pull this back just a little bit just to get enough room in here because it was just off, just enough scraping up against this casting here. It was rough. Oh, I also had to pull this charcoal canister out, but it's bolted up now. It's all good to go. We're gonna measure for drive shafts. And uh, the next video will be the cross member, but I'm not doing any fab stuff today. I plan on doing that first, but Honestly, my body is just torn up right now. Like, I about tore my thumbnail off putting the shift kit in here and I missed the snap ring and the one of the plungers popped back up and just ripped my thumbnail off. Um, I hit my face on the transfer case the other day. My fingers hurt. I'm just, you know, we're keeping it light duty today and just doing some wiring. But uh, I gotta get all this stuff out of here to lower this thing down to get to measuring the drive shafts. Uh, just occurred to me before we do all that, I'm going to bolt these back in, and then I'm gonna put a piece of wood on here to kind of just tap this roughly where it needs to be. It's not gonna be at the right perfect angle for where it's gonna be when it's done, but it'll be close enough that the drive shaft measurement will still be accurate. Because if I let it sag the whole way, um, that's gonna change how it measures out. So, but if I'm gonna put a piece of wood on here, this has to be bolted up too, and you know, kinda gotta bolt it back up anyway. So, got the bolts right here. Surprisingly enough, uh, these were not difficult to get out. They buzzed out pretty easily, and there's not tension on that torsion bar cross member. I, uh, when I undid them, I had that underneath it just in case it wanted to move somewhere because I didn't know if these had stress on them or not. But it turns out they didn't. They just came right out. And as you can see, I can just use my hands, push them right back up while holding a camera. So that. Uh, Pretty much best case scenario right there. We get these in, get this thing on the ground. Okay, so just measured the drive shaft again with the suspension at full compression or ride height, not full compression. Full compression would be like, you know, slammed, but we're not gonna get there. Uh, the full droop measurement was 55 and three quarter from the end of the tail shaft to the center of the U-joint uh, cap cradle. So right in the middle of the U-joint. 55 and three quarter at full droop. With it on the ground, it measured to 55 and one quarter. Not a big difference, but still enough. We're gonna use the shorter measurement. At, uh, I have seen vehicles where when you put them on the ground, the suspension travel changes a lot. Uh, the Monte Carlo is one of them. Um, I've run into that where I've lowered the car and my drive shaft was not good. I, it was too long. So. Uh, yeah, didn't film it because it was really tight under there, but got it done. Not an important part of the video. I got to call a drive shaft place and get one on the way. Uh, 
Pro tip, you can use any freaking semi truck or automotive driveline place for a drive shaft. You get a three and a half inch steel shaft with 1350 solid U-joints. No greaseful ones, you want solid ones. That's what's in the Escalade, it holds freaking 2,000 horsepower. Got it from some, you know, like Joe's drive shaft in Kansas City. Some, you know, old guy with like old machinery welding up drive shafts for fun. Nothing special, you don't need a fancy drive shaft. For something like this, just go get one made. You can get like inland truck parts, anywhere anywhere that makes drive shafts, because anything driveline can build you a drive shaft that'll be just fine for what you're doing. And it usually only takes a couple days to get one. Sometimes same day. So here's your pro tip. Save some time and money, get one locally. So now we get to the fun part, which is the wiring. Um, this diagram is easily findable on the Gazoogle machine. Um, if you just search this, what's on top here, I think I printed this off of a performancetrucks.net link. But pretty much what you're gonna do, is since the 60 and the 80 use the same connector, right here, this thingy, which looks like it has a dead spider in it. That's cool. What we're looking at is this. Like that. And it says, remove pins S, white and brown. See they're marked on here. S on the very end, and then uh, U, brown. Insert brown wire into position S, so you just move one over. Um, to get pins off, that's a bit of an interesting thing. That's something that took me a while to, to learn, as I didn't know you could do this. But we're gonna take apart this connector and get a tiny little pick to lift out these itty bitty little click lock things for the wires to come out of their, their holder. And you can actually take connectors apart and move things around. Once I figured this out, it was kind of a game changer. So uh, let's figure out how to get this connector torn apart and get started. Getting this thing apart here, first you're gonna unclip this little elbow connector right here. Then you're gonna get to this one, and then the matching one on the other side. Then this whole back piece will come off. Okay, well I got that off, it kind of flew off here. Yeah, that was definitely a spider. There's a spider nest in the back of this thing. Ew. We're gonna clean that later. A little bit closer. Also, this front face here has to come off this white piece. See how it's gray in there? And then white in front? We gotta get that off. And I am under the impression that it just kind of pops out, if I remember correctly. So, let's pop it out. Well, it does just pop out, but you just gotta pop it out from the backside. Uh, this white piece is just a rubber seal. You can get your pick and kind of work it in there and lift it out. Um, you have to pull on a little bit, but don't get too aggressive with it or they rip the wires. And don't cut any wires with this either. It will just come out, it just fits snug. What you see in there, you have the, uh, the little white clip deals. It's two on the bottom, one here, one there. And then on the other side, those are the clips for the back side of this white cover. So I got it dislodged. You kinda gotta take a couple picks, work it around. I put one under the edge here to get tension in it and then pop the back two and then to the other side. And I also accidentally stabbed myself, so. We are having fun today. Let's get this thing out of here now. Yep, so just poked it. Boom, there you go. You don't wanna lose this. And then inside there, you can see the little gray pieces on top or next to the pins, those are the locks. That's what we have to pick free to slide these individual pieces out when we go to move them. So looking at it like this, we need to remove the white pin, which is this one right here. And we can kind of push on it to see, you know, which one it is. We'll do it for the back side. You can move it around in there. And to get that out, uh, we're just gonna pick, probably push it forward a little bit poke a little lock thingy and pull it out the back side, which I don't have enough hands to film right now, so. It also wants you to remove pin U, but there is no U label on this diagram. So just use your imagination here. So you have T and V, T, U, V. It says brown wire, and the brown wire that I just pulled out was right there. Just pulled it out, it's right here. That's the brown wire. Because there's brown with a stripe on it, and just brown. If it was brown with a stripe that it wanted you to pull out, it would say brown with a stripe, not just brown. You want just the brown one. So you pull those out, which we just did. 
The white wire is not used for the 480. We have to add the second speed sensor for that also. But I'm gonna show you how to do it uh, with a way that does not require running any new wires to the ECU. And I wanna give a big shout out to my friend Dylan. He's uh, digging underscore Z71 on YouTube. He's probably the most underrated channel that I know of. He's one of my really good friends, like serious, like, you know, talk every day, we're bros, transfer case gang. Go check his channel out. He's extremely thorough, extremely detailed, extremely knowledgeable at what he does. He's got a, a single cab, um, four wheel drive, turbo, 95 uh, Silverado. You've seen it on my channel before if you're a real G. He has his own channel and he is a nerd about that stuff and suspension in particular, in a good way. Those of you guys who love knowledge will love his stuff. So um, do me a favor, do yourself a favor and check that out because you're gonna learn some stuff you didn't even know you needed to know. I've learned a lot from him, including this right here. Because we no longer use the rear O2 sensor, which I don't even know where it is. That's the front one. The rear one's flip-flopping around here. Yeah, right here. This doesn't do anything anymore. We can cut two of these wires and splice in our, our new connector, which is sitting over there. And then we're gonna go up to the ECU, find where the two wires that we cut correlate to the pinout on here, pop them out and move them to where they want these wires put in here. That way we don't have to run any new wires. It's already all loomed up through the frame and everything. Don't gotta touch anything. It's super clean, super easy. And you don't have to buy any pins either. This is the best way to do this. I'm convinced I've never done it, but it's really funny because he just texted me out of the blue this morning. He said, hey, I don't know if you've done this yet, but you should try this this way. Just figured I'd let you know. And I didn't tell him I was gonna be doing this today. He just, it just knew. It's just like sometimes you're kind of on the same wavelength as people. I don't know. It ever happened to you guys? Because it happens to me a lot. Uh, yeah, so big shout out to Dylan. And I just really want to stress that. Go check out Dylan's channel because he's a bro. Before we do anything else down here, let's lower this thing back down and inspect what we have to work with up front as far as the ECU connectors go. That way we have a better understanding of what we're going to do down here with which wires and things of that nature for that. I thought about taking this charge pipe out and I started to, I'd pull Logan's favorite highlight out. But uh, I thought, you know, I'm gonna see if I can, how much room I actually have to work with in there once I unclip the ECU from this little bracket thingy here. So you take your seven mil and you take the guns through these two bolts here that hold the clips in for the connectors. And then you'll have two of them. Captain Obvious here, if you couldn't see that already, there's two. This one's still kind of stuck in here. Okay, I got that one out now. So there's blue and green. Get these up a little more. There we go. That's the money right there. Sweet. Don't have to pull this out. Um, maybe I should call Logan to like put this back in. I don't know. She might think it's fun. Actually, no. She'd be pissed. But yeah, when it says here. It says green, green slash red, and then it's blue. It's green slash red because depending on the year you have, um, blue is blue is blue, they're all blue, but the earlier ones have a red connector instead of green, and that signifies a difference in the PCM type itself, which uh, if you go back on the Uncle Rob playlist and watch the junkyard hunting video, I explain the difference in the PCMs and we're looking for the connector colors, all that stuff is explained in there. So that's what it means. In this case, we have a green one, so we're gonna pretend red's not there. We're looking for green. What's up? <laughs> well then. <laughs> I have uh, something I need your help with. <laughs> no. <laughs> I told you. I told them about five minutes ago when I took that out that I might ask you to put it back in for me, but. Oh, you, you were gonna go get me? But you were pissed. I was thinking about it, but I was like, no, I can't do that. She'd be mad. But then you came here and just presented the opportunity to me, so I had to take it. Yeah, no, you can put it in. 
We also have to do the same thing here where uh, you kind of take apart the connector a little bit to get, well, you know, it's only two hands for that. This one's already missing the back pieces because they're broken off, but yeah, you have to pull these, these covers off and then you can get to the, the pin clips to move things around. So we're gonna do this way since we're in here and this is easy. Um, when it says remove brown wire from pin two of the, in this case, green PCM connector, I have the green one with the thing you popped off already. There's just two little clips you gotta poke in here. No big deal. But what does it say when it means pin two? The numbers are actually cast on the back here. I don't know if the GoPro can focus on that or not, but like here you have one, two, three, four. You know, you see all the numbers there? Some of them have crud on them from Pennsylvania life, but uh, pin two is this brown one right here. That's the one we gotta take out and move over. It says remove the brown wire from pin two. Yeah, pin two is just like the whole location. Oh. So we, we move it from spot two, white wire from pin 79 goes into pin two. Pin 79 of the blue connector, so we have to take this one apart too and then move one of these over to here. So we're gonna have a rogue wire going from one loom to the other, which is fine. But we also have to take that one apart then. We're back from fart break. He's back there cracking up. You can't see, but she's like silent laughing right now. So here's the little pin thingy that we have to lift up to pop this out. These ones are a lot easier to get to. You just kind of hold it up and then, you know, pull on it. Okay, so you don't actually have to pull that black thing out. I'm just stupid. And this one was stuck. It just needs a little bit more. Um, aggression so that is removed now we're going to remove the white wire from pin 79 which would be on this one 79 yep right there that's the one we're going to pull out so we got to pop this connector out of here this is what i was talking about it's just that i was able to do it with one hand so it can't be that hard wow i'm good pop pin 79 out right there so it just needed to hold it up and push it a little bit harder I guess wiggle it a little bit now this one should just come right out the back yep see there we go and this is the one see I look at this 9,000 times just to make sure it's white right I'm looking at the word white that's why I said that pin 79 of the blue connector insert into position 2 of the green connector so to give us a little bit more room to work with here, I'm going to finagle this thing out of its tangle just a little bit more. See what clips the pins in is this little flange here, a little plastic piece will sit on that and that's what keeps the wire from coming out. We're just moving that out and then this pulls out if that uh, makes any sense to you guys. Some of your dad probably should have pulled out. No. None of you guys. You guys are real G's because this is real info. Oh my God. <laughs> I was just like sitting here trying to process that you actually said that. Well, you know, I'll rephrase. There's a lot of people on YouTube whose audiences have dads that should have pulled out, but you guys are not one of them. I would just say people in the world. Yeah. Anybody who's messing with pins under an almost 20 year old crusty ass Yukon XL, their dad, uh, maybe probably should have more kids because these are the kind of people, these are the people that make the world go around. You guys. Rotation of the earth is caused by boosted LS motors. I cannot be convinced otherwise. So we just gotta stick this right in here. You just stick it in. You're gonna encounter a little resistance from the rubber, but you just keep going. See, so you can come out the other side. Boom, now it's clipped in, it's not coming out. So now the connector part is done from up here. Does, isn't that moot? I don't know. That's what it looks like to me, is that it's like the alternative option. Like you have option one, two, and three, and you pick which one you're actually gonna do. That's what it looks like to me. You know, I think you're right. I interpreted this as, um, this is step two, two different ways but that's why we didn't do anything underneath because I wasn't sure what was going on up here. I remember doing some soldering. I've done this before years ago and I remember soldering something and I thought it was this, but I guess it wasn't. So we didn't do anything wrong down there. Now we can just 
put the one back and keep the one pulled out. It's fine. And we can move up to here, wherever this goes, we have to find which wires we're gonna cut out of the, uh, the O2 sensor, which is gonna require looking up a schematic that I don't have in front of me because this isn't part of the instructions. So I found this diagram online here that has the pinouts. We're looking for the bank one sensor two. That's tan and white. So we cut that one. That's in pin 29. And then in the second half of the connector over here, we have bank one sensor two signal high, purple and white, pin 68. So we cut that one too. Now we're gonna go up to the front and pop those out. They should be the right ones. If we go to the corresponding pins up here and check them, and they're the same, you know, purple and white and tan and white, then we should be good. We'll just put our VSS on the back of that one. And now because of my confusion that Logan helped me figure out, you now know what to do for the alternative method of moving that connector around. We still didn't do anything here. We just popped them out. Um, I'll just put them back in the appropriate places when we come back down here. But now I wanna see, I wanna see if these pins match up to use uh, Dylan's method. I'm blind. What? The Dylan. Yes, the Dylan. The Dylan is helping figure this out. Fun fact, the Dylan also played a role in us getting to know each other, which is kind of funny. Yeah. She lived near him in Florida, so whenever I'd go see him, that is how that kind of facilitated. Sorry, Dylan, I may have had other reasons for visiting you. <laughs> so, pin 68 of the blue connector should be the purple and white wire. Let's see here. Yep, 67, 68. And there is a number of purple and white wires coming out of here, which is concerning. Uh, yeah, we're going to continuity test those just to be sure. And the other one, the tan and white was pin 28 of the same connector, I do believe, which is covered up. No, it's not. It's back here. 28, which is... Yep, that tan and white in 28 is also right next to a bunch of other tan and white wires. They are 99% the right ones, but we can make sure really easily before we mess something up, so that's what we're gonna do. Well, why don't you introduce yourself since you're helping me with stuff uh -huh. now, tell the people who you are. I guess you can call me Garcia. Eric Garcia. Yeah, I'm new to the shop, so. New tech, triple seven. Oh yeah. He's who I bother when Tanner's not here. <laughs> He helped me put the transfer case in last night, which sucked. I said a little bit about that before, but you'll tell them how much that sucked. Oh yeah. <laughs> Just a bunch of miss trying and trying. Take it off, look. Um, yeah, I have it's uh you know what pen you're already on it? Yeah, I have it written down. Uh pin sixty eight, a purple and white wire. Purple and white. They're both uh, they're both on this side here. Yeah, pin 68, purple and white, and pin 28, tan and white. But there's a bunch of them of the same color around it, so that's why I don't just want to like let it fly without testing it first. Okay. I guess his leads might be long enough to actually work. You see it up there? It's kind of, yeah. uh, it's back farther. Two of them are cut already. Yeah, that's, a, that's the wire. That's the same one? Yeah. So you're just touching the other side of the lead to the end of that yeah, wire? Yeah, doing an ohms test. Pretty much uh, ohms is just one into the other, see if it's the same one to make. So that one's good. Now uh, we can pop out, because so that was 68, that's the correct one. So we'll just leave that one out because that one will get moved to one of the pins for the VSS. And now we need to do 28 for the tan and white. Yeah, so you guys can get a better view of how he's getting that out of there, what I was trying to show you before. Yeah, you pretty much just pick this pin up, this clip right here and push the pin back. This is great if you don't have somebody to help you out. You just click yeah, on it. right. Now that one's gonna be the other wire that was next to it, right? Yep. Yeah, I caught them both already. Cut first, ask questions later. <laughs> so we'll see if it beeps. If it beeps, it's the right one. It, you said it was the other cut one, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's no. That's not it? Uh -uh. Well, dang. I wonder which one it would be then. Did we pull pin 28 out? Oh, that was 29. Oh, it was 29? Yeah. Oh. See how 
Yeah, see how easy that is to get it mixed up? There's two of the same that's like right next to each other. That's why I was like ultra, um, <laughs> ultra wanting to check. If they were all the same, if, or if they weren't all the same and it was just one tan and white wire, I would have popped that bitch out and sent it right away. You say you want 28, right? 28, yeah. That should still be tan and white. But but this works now. Let's see. That's it. We got a winner, guys. That is exactly what we wanted to hear. Now I don't have to run wires down there for that. I can just come right off of those and move them to where they need to be up here. You want to keep them out? Push them in. Pull that one the rest of the way out. I need All to move right. it. There you go. Hell yeah. Ooh, well, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Bailing me out once again. <laughs> so we got the new uh, VSS harness pigtail here. And it's important that you identify pin A and pin B, which we did here. So I assigned pin B to purple and pin A to the tan and white because pin A, tan and white, we're going to call it here, must be connected to pin 22 of the green PCM connector. And B, the purple, must be moved to pin 23. So the two that we just pulled out of here are going to have to move to this connector into spots 22 and 23 which are on this side. So we're gonna have to pop this green thingy off too. So as far as the original method goes, I did pull these out to show you guys out of my stupor, which ended up not being that useless because now you know where they are. But I put them back because I'm gonna use the movement in the connector down here because leave stuff where it is up here because I, it goes from connector to connector. So it has to move to the other side, which creates less freedom between these two connectors, which is already gonna be hindered by moving these two over to this one. If we just move the other one down there on the transmission side, then it affects nothing up here. There's no rogue wire sticking out. There's nothing to reloom. There's nothing to keep things from, you know, being harder to move around. So I put that stuff back. I'm gonna put it, um, move the brown wire to position S in the sensor and not do anything with the white one there. But down here, we gotta move these two to this side. So we'll have to pull these out a little bit. I'm gonna need more hands for this. So we're moving pin A, or yeah, connector A from the VSS, which is gonna be our tan wire up here into pin 22 of the green connector, which I took off the other side already. Spot 22 is right there and there's a little orange plug in the way. So we're using 22 and 23, which are two empty spots right here. If you were wondering, adding a DSP-5 to like a Duramax or something kind of works the same way. I don't know, we'll just shove it in and see what happens. She said. So yeah, I was double check every time. I'm not making any assumptions. A is tan. A goes into 22. 22. And I'm making sure that I kind of got this wrapped through here the right way. Got to pull this way because I don't want the twister on that way and be in the way. So it's going to be clean like this. 22. Send her home. Apparently you can just push right through that rubber thing. Oh, alligator clip gacked that a little bit. Go limp dick on me. I'm going to need some little pliers or something. The uh, tan wire has a limp dick right now. Mm. I just had to persuade it. And the purple one, pin B, goes to pin 23 on this thing. So right here, same way, same deal. We're just gonna shove her home right into 23, 21, 22, 23, right next to the tan one. This one might be a little more difficult. I should have spit on it. Okay, we got it. There we go. Repinned and ready for action up here. Now, we'll pick it back up a little bit, strip the ends of the other wire, and put this thingy on. Okay, so here's what we are tapping into, the tan and brown from the O2 that we cut earlier. And did you have a question, Logan? Why? Oh, we needed to put the transmission in park to get the splines to line up, put the converter in. This uh, doesn't oh. need to be here anymore. 
but it's tight and I'm gonna hurt myself, so we'll do that later. I'm gonna strip these. By the way, if you don't have wire strippers that do it like automatically like this, you should definitely get some because it's a game changer. A to the tan one. Make sure you double check 69 times before insertion. And we're gonna twist these up so they don't wad up a little bit. These are the connectors that came with this pigtail from the dealership, by the way, which is pretty neat. And they're heat shrink, so I don't like using connectors that aren't heat shrink because they're ugly. I'm superficial and shallow like that. Stick it in and squeeze it. It wasn't the best crimp of my life, but it wasn't the worst. Purple B. I like to make little label tags with this yellow tape all the time, and I leave them there. Uh, if you go under the Escalade, you'll find these in places. I do sure hope this is long enough. Oh yeah, we can put the sensor in right there or we can use the one on the back of the transfer case if we really want to. It wouldn't be long enough for this one, maybe. That wasn't, yeah, maybe it is. There's already one in the transfer case, so probably we'll go. Oh yeah, it is long enough. Yeah, it will plug in right back up here but I'm gonna heat shrink these and add loom to that first. So we're pretty much done with this. Uh, now we just have to go back and do this. So pretend, do, 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 we're back to the beginning. Remove pin S, white and brown, insert brown wire into position S. So that one right there on the very end that it came out of before. Yeah, we're on the side with the dead spider. There's, no. there's a spider nest in the connector. Fuck no. It's probably like 10 years old, but yeah. So we're putting the brown wire into there. Okay, well that's pretty much done. We just gotta put the connector back together now. Um, I saw somewhere that you can put this white one, you can either tape it off and put it out of the way or stuff it into an empty hole for safekeeping. But we're gonna pull it out and get some electrical tape and just tape it up back here for now. But we'll slide this rubber piece back down. It's gonna push all these through, so it would actually probably be easier if I put the front cover back together first before doing this, but I didn't do that because I'm dumb. So I learned from my mistakes. There you go. Put the front back together before you push the rubber thingy on. Because now I have to, the it went too far and the little clip grabbed the next ridge on the connector so it's gonna stick out and I have to fix that. Same. Okay, so we got the unused white pin just kind of fed back up here, taped it over, and we'll take the original loom. We did do it to do. Boom. Like nothing ever happened. It is good to go. Up here, we'll have to get a freaking John's oil field heat gun and heat this up or something. Maybe find some loom in the dumpster. That's typically what I've been doing on this thing is if I need loom for something, I will look in the garbage to see what they've ripped off of some something else that they deemed um, like not nice. Like I found some, some half melted stuff and I used it. It's fine. That's what we do around here. Yeah, let's find a, let's get a heat gun, get this heat shrunk. Even if we don't find any loom, we can still get this part of the job done. Well, Logan just dropped the GoPro. The only GoPro I have. Fun fact, my entire channel since last February, when I got that GoPro, has been filmed with that GoPro. It's the only one I have. I use it for everything. I have a tendency to just like go hog wild when I have a torch, so I gotta like, you know, pedal it a little bit. Don't overdo it. Yeah, you don't want to overdo it, but some of these have uh, glue on the inside that you can see once it shrinks and the glue comes out. That's how you know that it's done because that glue kind of holds it too in addition to the actual crimp. Like, see this one needs a little bit more to have the glue come out. Mm. Ah. Yep, see the glue coming out now? Yeah. It looks like it's gonna catch on fire. Yeah, it's pretty standard. You'll have that on a job like these. This part's just about finished up. Uh, I'll just leave that dangling. We'll put this thing back on the ground to get the ECU put back together. Putting this back together, 
you just take your clippy things make sure you put them back on the right connector so you don't get them mixed up i don't know if you noticed but i left i didn't take ones off i didn't need to i left this blue one on here so i knew that this was the blue one because of the, the, the without the thingies on there you really can't tell the difference so yeah all you do to put those on is make sure it's facing the right way first ready wow, wow. magic amazing yeah then when you put these on you kind of got to push them on and thread them a little bit because these bolts have are like held captive in here by that little press lock so you can only plug this in so far you actually have to draw it into the ecu slot by tightening it hmm. yeah it's a little bit annoying but part of it i'll shove all this back under here oh i see now yeah that's what this is for and even on the ECU, you can't see it, but it has blue printed on the hole that the blue side goes on. As long as you can read and you choose to read, it should be okay here. What the heck? This one blue one has like a freaking hunk missing out of it. I don't have to pop this off and grind a little burr off. I don't know what happened or how this happened, but this little thingy got slightly damaged somehow and it's keeping me from plugging it in see mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to cut that off yeah, you couldn't really see. yeah okay so now I got the little burr cleaned off of there just filed it off and clip this back on and actually put it in this time hopefully it works and I know it's in the right spot because I can thread this in with my fingers and it is pulling it in so that's how you'll know I'm just glad this is over I don't know if you can tell right now, but there's other things I'd rather be doing. Like driving it. I think that's a truth no one wants to speak of about this whole car or life thing is that I don't think anyone really has a true passion for the act of busting their knuckles on stuff. We do it for the result, not the, not the process. But the reward of the result makes the process worthwhile like if you zoom in on the micro yeah breaking your fingers on stuff and being frustrated is not fun but if you zoom out to see why you're doing it as a complete picture then you like it then it's fun I think that concept is interesting because you know if this thing wasn't gonna make as much power as it was and stuff i really wouldn't have a whole lot of fun doing this like i don't i don't have a, a burning passion to fix regular cars like i can never be a dealership tech I'll, hell no all you dealership techs out there mad props because i will go insane doing what you do every day no question i don't like to fix things i like to make them better so if something breaks and I have to fix it, I'm going to find something else to do to improve it while I'm in there so that I didn't just make it go back to the same point. Even if I'm putting a better part in, I still want to find something else to do. So it's not just like a one dimensional, slightly better than it was before, but now it's not broken anymore thing. When something goes down, it comes back harder. That's like something that I live by. Kind of like the Escalade. It blew up. I didn't just throw a new head gasket in there. I said, screw that. We're going to go through the whole motor and make it a completely monster capable on a different level. Because it's just how I got to do it. It's all about motion, forward movement, and being better than the day before. Even me. If I wake up and I'm not a better version of myself than I was the day before, I didn't do my job during that day to improve myself. And if you wear one of my shirts, I hope that you approach things the same way too. That way, if you see somebody else wearing one of my shirts, you know that that guy is not an idiot. <laughs> All that aside, now we got the ECU connected. So, I'm uh half fast clip it back into a spot here because I can't 
get it in the whole way without pulling the thing off and I don't really feel like doing that anyway so I'm just not gonna. So the wiring side of the 480 conversion is finished up. You should be able to use this video as like a straight up guide to what to do as long as you're aware that the first part of the ECU connector messing with we did is an alternative to the first part of the transmission connector. Just find those instructions on Google and go from there. You have one of three options. I demonstrated two of them. I personally use the first one, but that's just my preference. You can do either one. But also, uh, the shirt that I'm wearing in the video, and not the one I'm wearing right now because these are discontinued, but the shirt I'm wearing in the video is available at stapletonautoworks.com. The link is in the description. I'll pin it in the comments too. It's uh, styled after like the 90s Good Ranch Service Plus logo. I gotta find some better to hang my shirts on than just throwing them over a rag. But we also got the OG flag shirt that's inspired by the Escalade's intercooler because when I used to stare at it for thousands of miles in my rearview mirror, this is kind of what I saw. I'm like, you know, it kind of looks like a flag. So got with Jacob and got that made. We also have that in hoodies. We'll not be ordering any more hoodies. Uh, we're out of larges right now, but we still have small, medium, XL, 2X, and 3X. So if you want a hoodie, make sure you get one now before the season's over because this is the um, last order until, you know, it gets colder out. Because, you know, it's getting warm. There's still cold days at the track and stuff. You still might need one. But we also got the uh, Candyman ZL1 shirts. If you're a fan of the People's Track videos, those ones are also uh, what we got is what we got. There's still a good bit left. We gotta make room for some new designs coming up. One of them is the Uncle Rob shirt. It's gonna be freaking sweet. And hats, we got hats. Uh, we got a bunch of hat boxes made, already prepped and ready. And fun fact, it's not this style. It's a different one that's even cooler. So I'm just super pumped about all that. Every order gets a handwritten note from Logan that's signed by both of us. Check it out. That is how you can support the mission, the build, the cause. If you wake up every day with the intent to be a better version of yourself than you were the day before, you get yourself something from one of these racks and you wear it with pride because it means something to me. It should mean something to you too. If you found this video useful, send it to a friend because the algorithms don't always do their job of suggesting stuff. Uh, I kind of rely on you guys to tell people that it can help also because I make these videos to bring value to people who need information, perspective, anything like that. So, help me out. Bonus material. I don't know what video this is gonna go at the end of, but it's totally obscure. Fun fact, this guy right here designs all of the t-shirts on my website. His name's Jacob. Hi, I'm Jacob Lee. I own Elite Designs. Um, I've been doing this for about nine years or so. That's not how he normally talks. You're all like, I'm Jacob Lee, Elite Designs, like, I, I make shirts and stuff. <laughs> I draw This is what I do. <laughs> yep, there it is. All right. I draw stuff, make it look good, sell t-shirts. The man behind a lot more than you know about, like, what are you, what are you willing to disclose as your clientele that people probably see everywhere? Uh, work for 1320, TRC, um, Real Street will be up up and coming actually. Uh, Misfire Motorsports, J Rod, is uh, basically everybody. Yeah. Yeah. If you've Street noticed, Streetcar Takeover. I mean, it's it's all it's all fun. Yeah. Just like working with good people and having fun with everybody else. Yeah. So when you guys leave comments of like, oh, you should do a shirt about blah blah blah, there have been several times where I'm like. <laughs> That's great, screenshot, text it to Jacob. And he's I, like, dude, that's text, hilarious. I get a text message at two o'clock in the morning and I basically, all right, let's do it. Sounds like a good time. Yeah, that's uh, that's where the tranny destroyer shirt <laughs> idea came from. It came from a comment, I texted it to him. He called me, he's like, bro, that's awesome, let's do it. Next morning he had it done and it was off to the printer. That's how quick that happened. Pretty much. And every single shirt has a hidden 69 in it, it now. It does. Every single time. Uh, I think that it'll be a good, like, where's Waldo sort of thing. So I think it'll be a good time to be able to put something in a little bit more interaction rather than just buying a t-shirt. So. Yeah, once you tell these people to leave a comment about what kind of shirt they want to see. Yeah, yeah let's, let's see what your guys' ideas are. And uh, give me a challenge, get creative, 
and don't be afraid to be too wild. That, that there you go. Be, Leave a comment. Check out staplesandautoworks.com to get yourself some of this man's work. I promise he's a lot more lively when you don't shove a camera in his face without <laughs> letting him prepare. <laughs> Absolutely. And check out Elite Designs on Instagram, Facebook. Do it. Do it. <laughs> I know the deal. <laughs>